Well, Francis, thank you very much to be given this opportunity to have a word to you. My first question is, or my, <clears throat> I would like just to ask the president here. Uh, I wonder if he has visited some shops to find out how much the meal will cost in this time. Proceed, um, Madam. I'm always watching on the TV can, to please, see, can we maintain to see silence? or to hear that maybe one day the president will come out saying, uh, we increased the civil servants. So, things are going bad. We are really going astray with uh, starvation. Miro Miro has increased, everything has increased. That is my first question, Your Excellency. My second question comes to the Honorable Minister of uh, Health. Uh, at the moment when I'm standing in front of you here, Honorable Minister, I'm shocked and I'm even crying. I'm crying because I buried my brother on Sunday. When I buried my brother on Sunday, it was because of the negligence of the doctors in the hospital. When my brother came in the hospital, he was walking on his own two feet. But when the condition changed, those doctors, we, 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 we met with them, we talked to them. They kept on telling us, we are still investigating. We are still investigating. Till somebody is now is no more, then they have to refer that person to Hundu. On the oxygen, he just died 100 kilometers just at Congola. So now my question to the Honorable Minister, what conditions or what instructions have you given the doctors in the regions to refer the patients at the big hospitals? Because here they are giving us a lot of problems. They see somebody is dying or somebody is, the, the disease is deteriorating, they don't take an action. Until when they see somebody is now only the oxygen is when they make a referral. Referral in the ambulance is not even an aeroplane. the machines which are monitoring people. They are not there. They are only using one monitor which is in the ICU. If somebody gets worse, they move that one to, to, to put it to another patient. <laughs> Honorable Minister, please, can you do something to Zambezi region, please? <laughs> Your Excellency, I thank you very much to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> Now, for the Minister of Health, I will allow him to come and talk. He already answered some things. But as a new minister, it will be good to see him. Oh, my dear boy. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade President. And thank you very much for, for the question. Uh, first and foremost, my condolence and deepest sympathy to the family, to the bereaved family who have lost their beloved one. Uh, the same to many others in the villages and in township who are not represented here today. Uh, any life lost is too many pains and agony for all of us. Um, to answer to the question, and in fact it links directly with what was asked in the previous meeting, the issue of referral from Katima to Rumi. 
or from other hospitals, district hospital to Bendu, is unacceptable. We all agree on that. I, I, I still want to repeat that it's unacceptable. We are working on mechanisms to improve the situation, including airlifting of patients from Katima. Obviously, we need to negotiate with our colleagues in the Ministry of, of Transport they have to help us. But one key challenge, let me not be long, is the issue of shortage of staff, and especially doctors. I know Katima Hospital, I was there. Uh, there is a matron there who worked there for 30 years, I just forgot her name, and two doctors, uh, or three doctors, two from Zim Zambia and one from Nigeria. I forgot their name, but I, I know what I'm talking about. There was a time when Katima only had two doctors when the Cubans contract was expired. And that was a, cl a crisis, basically. But the situation is not confined to Katima police. When we went to Opua, which is also a very large area, catering for more than 75,000 people, there were only one senior doctor, a lady from Uganda, and a young man from Tanzania. So you can see and appreciate the gravity of the problem. But we're not taking off. We're working hard to see to it that Katima Hospital is a regional hospital for Zambezi. We can start working at Katima Hospital and that we are going to do starting as a district hospital, doing all the intermediate and, and, and minor cases. Uh, I have already alluded to this in the previous meeting, and I have just sent an SMS as well to the Permanent Secretary, uh, Minister Shaniwa can read that SMS if you don't believe me, to say that the Permanent Secretary must look at the traveling and accommodation cost for the team of doctors, some are from Rundu, from Bindu, and Ananjokwe, specialists and generalists who are coming to Katima to work from the 2nd of September until the 5th of September. As a I'm one of those doctors. I want to be wearing a tie or shoe. I want to encourage my team. This team will come and consult on serious cases or cases that otherwise would have been sent to Rundu or Bindu. There will be procedures, surgical procedures be done on cases that normally would not be done here. I know the hospital, I was in theater. There are only few things that are there in theater. For instance, the operation table has been moved and scratching the floor. Now it's got dots there. I told the matron, just get someone to fix this one. The ultrasound is outdated, and there was one more thing, it's autoclave. This machine, like pot that burn or sterilize the equipment after you've done the operation. So, uh, Dr. Yuri confirmed to me that you're sending your equipment to be sterilized in the room. That we need to change. I think you must also appreciate colleagues that I was in office only four or five months. In fact, I haven't even, uh, you know, familiarize myself with all the aspects, but I'm aware of all these things, and I'm having my hands on, on the problem. Um, on the issue of negligence, you know, it's almost illegal terms, uh, one has to be careful. The minister has got no authority to either validate, condemn, or make political statement when an allegation has been made that somebody has acted negligent is the Health Professional Council of Namibia, which is a statutory body that look into matters of negligence, including myself. In fact, as a matter of fact, um, I, was, I was advised by the Attorney General to be careful when I go and operate on the region, because I may as well just be investigated if I acted negligent. My response to him was, of course I would be investigated. Why not? Because I'm a medical doctor before I'm a minister. 
So the case of negligence, my advice is this. You write a formal letter to the health professional council. That is the statutory body that investigates professional medical doctor and others in the case of alleged negligence. And I'm using alleged because of legal terms. I'm not to say that what happened is or is not negligent. So that is the short answer to, to the question. But please also admit that Namibia has got no doctors. But we have about 60% of our population being young people. We also need to go to medical school to study medicine, to solve the problem. I know there are challenges. You may not have money. But uh, I was assured the student fund is working on it. And we, we do have a couple of students overseas studying medicine, but we need more. It's not enough to rely on students and other foreign nationals. Not that they are not doing a good job, it's just that we cannot claim independence if we're not independent, professional, national, Namibian ourselves. The last thing is what I want to repeat. We are training community health workers or so-called health extension workers. Obviously, we're also facing problems because we train them before we employ them. If you see the Namibian SMS, it's the question how people, when are we going to be employed? I don't employ them. In fact, I was complaining to Mr. Kapopi at the airport. Uh, not that he's responsible, just sharing a concern. That, uh, you know, these things of a minister going to public service commission is sometimes a challenge, but those are in the wrong matter. So I do not employ, neither does the permanent secretary. It's the public service commission that employed. But we're working on that. I, I have good, good promises that things are going to change. So I remain um, optimistic in that regard. Uh, it's terrible when somebody died. I have lost families as well. Any one of us here. Situation is great, but we're not going to change overnight. But we're trying. So come and see what we'll come and do here in September. And it goes on. And give us advice. I'm, I'm willing to take advice from the community. I thank you. I didn't answer her. She was asking me whether I went to the shops to see how much milk and maize meal is costing. She was my former student. I told them how to tighten the belt when the going is rough. Now she's asking me, maybe this afternoon you can take me. I just came this morning, therefore I didn't go to the shop. But maybe you and I can go, so you can show me. But I do know things are expensive. I do know. But we must sometimes not live as I'm teaching you beyond your means. We must cut our suits to fit our bodies. <laughs> Remember that saying, don't want cognac, whiskey, because others were tired of beer. Now you want to move. You seem to be thinking that you are sophisticated. So you must be realistic. We are still a poor country. We are still poor villages. So we cannot do what many people are doing daily. Huh? My student, I heard my former student. Huh? You are not getting your name. Where did she go? She, you see, I didn't train her that way. Ask where she will move out before the answer comes. I wouldn't have answered it. No, she's dead. Oh. Okay, that's, that's true. I'm just trying to make a joke, but it's true, things are expensive. We are a capitalist system. And many of us want socialist results from a capitalist system. It cannot work. But we are seriously looking in price control. Something has to be done. These housing prices are forcing us to see how we can legally, constitutionally, control certain things as a government. But that's not allowed in the capitalist system. 
This is the hardware system. But we will be protected by the concept of mixed economy. Mixed, mixed economy. So we're going to look at these things. We said we declared war. You don't believe us, huh? Wait and see. So thank you very much.